Hi there, this is the third work and energy methods video. Um, I'm just going to walk us through something, uh, a problem that would be um, exponentially difficult um, using the kinetics particles method. Um, however, uh, very simple when looking at the energy uh, work and energy method. So, taking a quick zoom in, we're going to draw our overall picture of the situation. Uh, first of all, let's just say we have a, a ceiling right here with a little joint. Now this joint is going to be attached to, I'm going to just say, three different points of time. First of all, we're going to have point A. I'm just going to have a ball. And then we're going to have, say, point B maybe, which is going to be, I don't know, somewhere down here. And then let's finish it off with a point B, which is going to be, or a point C, which is going to be along the same path until it hits say a little stub or something along those lines which is going to cause an extra bend which is going to cause an extra bend this direction and allow us to meet point C let me just give us a little path of motion here so you can kind of see how you had one radius of curvature right here having to do with this distance which happens to be two meters in this problem and then you have another radius of curvature which is going to be a distance of I'm just going to say here it's going to be 0.75 so it's kind of an interesting little problem and you can see how it, it could be somewhat problematic uh, in, in using other methods but you'll find that this problem is really easy especially when you're using the work energy methods so let's start off we're going to start off with A for A what we're going to assume is that the velocity is zero and that the height is mm, now I know the picture doesn't show it but let's just say that the height between and as I said I, I know that the the scaling is terrible but let's just say this is one meter just to kind of give us some different numbers and it's this is kind of a double double dimensioning right here but I'm just going to say that this is 0.75 just so that we have a, a basis or a concept of it. Okay. Oops. Okay, so now what we have is we have our first numbers which are going to be in blue. That'll be VA is going to equal zero and ZA is going to equal one meter. Okay. Well, we know that the sum or the total energy the total energy equals PE plus KE. It's a bit too close. PE plus KE. Well, since the motion, the VA is zero you know that's all going to be potential energy so we can just calculate it out like that PE is equal to MGH which is the mass of this ball which I'm going to make up one right now let's just say 5 G which is going to be 9.81 
an h which we gave an h of 1. So when we calculate that out, the total energy, let's just say, let's just call it energy, it's going to be 49.05. You don't even need to know, I, I suggest that you know the units, but realize that as long as you are, you maintain the same type of units throughout um, this problem, you shouldn't even, you wouldn't even have to worry about it. So anyway, let's rock it down to point B. Point B, you're going to use very similar technique, except now there's not going to be any potential energy because that'll be that's a reference point. So it's all going to be kinetic energy. Our total energy is 49.05 is equal to one half m v squared. Uh, mind you that the mass is 5 so when we calculate this out, let me just write that in, mass is not just, we'll just say 5 here and when you calculate this out and you let it work itself out you'll see that V is going to equal 4.43 meters a second. That's how quickly that thing will accelerate going down. Okay, so is that, I mean, what, what does that mean? Well, let's continue. If we go on and we see that point B is only kinetic energy at this point. Now it raises up 0.75 meters. What's the, velo uh, what's the velocity of it at that point? Well we can find that out. Just using the same techniques. However this time we know that this 49.05 total energy which we solved in the beginning is going to equal both PE and KE. We know the potential energy because we know how high it is off the ground and that will enable us to solve for the velocity. So let's just solve it out. 49.05 equals mgh that would be mass 5g 9.81 h 0.75 plus the kinetic energy one half mass 5 V squared. When you solve this all out, you guys will be really good at algebra and you'll find that a majority of your mistakes are in algebra. V is equal to 2.21 meters per second. Now what's interesting about this is how easy it is to toss yourself right into the kinetics portion or even kinematics. You could say, hey, well, you know, I know the, uh, I know the radius, I know the, we can figure out the, the theta dot and all this just from, just from using the kinetic um, the kinetic energy and the potential energy, we're actually able to find key factors which will save us time uh, later on. Notice that in the other methods we might have had to use some of these other things like maybe this length right here or or our angles or just notice that we didn't have to do that because we knew the heights already. Anyway. I hope you guys like uh, enjoyed the video and leave any comments if you have any requests for any future topics. Have a nice day.